The definition of the derivative, part two. The definition of the derivative is the limit below, this limit here. Note that if you plug h into this limit, you will get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. Uh, here's our example. Use the definition of the derivative to find the derivative of f of x if f of x is one over x. Uh, I like to refer often to functions as just a rule. In other words, it tells you what to do with x. In this case, it says, give me a number x and I'll put it under one, or in, in the denominator here. That's the rule. And our first step is really nothing more than writing the rule minus the rule over h. In other words, this if you look at the definition, this says f minus f. It may have something different plugged into it each case, but I can write it with a blank space here in both of these. And what I'd like to put in, in here in this one is, of course, x plus h, and put x into this one. And I call that the setup, and I really advise students not to skip that step. I mean, skip, you know, put these parentheses here. It save, uh, preserves the integrity of the sign for assigns it for one thing. Um, so in any case, uh, plug a, x plus h into the first f and x into the uh, second f, and here I've done it. And now we're ready to go. Uh, it turns out that if I plug in uh, 0 for h, I still have 0 over 0, but um, I might be able to simplify this a little bit, and that's what I'm going to do. And I think the first step I'm going to um, uh, do here is to get a common denominator in the top. So and the next, what my next step is is to simplify the expression and uh, see what I end up with. Well, um, here it is, and I got a common denominator here. And then the next step, of course, is to distribute the negative sign and bring the h into the denominator, which I've done. And then I have x minus x. Of course, that just leaves me with negative h on top and this expression on the bottom. And then finally, I can uh, cancel the h's, can I, and, and end up with negative 1 on top and x times x plus h on the bottom. Now it's possible for me to take this limit, and that's what I do in step 4. I take the limit, and if, I, if h goes to 0, this becomes closer, gets closer and closer to x times x on the bottom and negative 1 on the top. I bring the negative out front, and my answer is negative 1 over x squared. So my derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. I'd advise you to go back and, and redo this problem on your own, uh, stopping the movie uh, before each step is completed to see if you can do it yourself.